project my voice, so I'll try not to yell at you. Good morning, my name is Josh Holstein. I'm the founder of a technology company using text messages to revolutionize vehicle shopping. And our company's called Celleride. So Celleride began a few years ago when I came across a vehicle that had the old fashioned for sale sign. It's a little cliche, but I knew there had to be a better way. And I'd been dabbling with text marketing around the same time when it hit me. Why couldn't I just send a text message to this vehicle and receive back all the answers to the questions that I was having while standing there in front of it using a widely adopted technology of texting. So with my computer degree from Missouri State, go Bears, I, uh, in, a, in a few weeks of pretty much no sleep, I created the MVP or the prototype, what we now call the Celleride for Cell Bionic Platform. So now I've got this great new product, but how in the world am I going to get it to the masses with the lack of resources that I had back in those days? And that's when I was introduced to the founder of Carfax, Ewan Barnett, and it absolutely goes without saying that he too founded a company that revolutionized the way in which we might sell vehicles. When we met for the first time, we literally spoke for five hours. Uh, he immediately jumped on as an advisor and investor in the company. Shortly after that meeting, we virtually shelved the for sale by owner platform, realized the massive potential that our technology brings to the automotive space as a whole, went back to the drawing board, created the dealership product from the ground up, and we call it our info to go. So with Car Info to Go, shoppers can text a vehicle on a lot, at an event, uh, even at a mall, and in digital and print advertising, and immediately receive a mobile brochure that includes all the pertinent information about that vehicle, including photos and video, uh, Carfax reports, vehicle reviews, dealer finance applications, brand promotions, you name it, it can be placed on that mobile brochure. At that exact same time, the dealership or the brand is receiving that shopper's contact information and demographic information to be able to follow up in a less threatening form of communication. We completed a phenomenal proof of concept phase and a top 10 technology accelerator here in St. Louis called Capital Innovators. Uh, during that process, we made the realization that we needed to focus on being the experts in the technology and plug into the experts in the industry. Uh, and in doing so, we created a number of great uh, sales and marketing features on the Car Info to Go platform. For example, one of our greatest features that we believe is the future of our company is what we call the Shopper Path, where we use uh, IP capture, geolocation, and our texting technology to follow that shopper through all their interactions with the brand, including plugging into our client's business uh, intelligence tools to know is this shopper two days or two months away from buying the vehicle based on actions performed within the platform. Um, so simply put, we've taken this robust lead generation tool and evolved it into this industry disrupting shopper insights and data capture platform. So we've been working our business development pipeline extremely hard over the last year and a half, and we feel that we're at or near the finish line on major deals with companies like Toyota and Nissan, Honda, Simon Malls, Bass Pro Shops, Merits Motivation and uh, Enterprise Holdings. A few other companies in there that we've also got in that pipeline that we've been uh, very fortunate to work with. We were recently just selected as one of the top 15 startups in the St. Louis region by the St. Louis Chamber of Commerce. Uh, great honor to be uh, representing the St. Louis region in New York City at Thomson Reuters. We had a great showing there and the head of innovation was blown away by our technology. I'm a little nervous about it because tomorrow I've got a, a presentation to them at their, his global innovation team. So wish me luck. But it's a really great opportunity and a, a great organization to hopefully be partnering with at some point in the near future. We're a small team, but a very agile team, and we're very passionate about what we do. As we're gearing up to reach these major deals that we've been working on, uh, we were also recently approved by the Missouri Technology Corporation for $175,000 in funding. If anybody knows about what that, how that organization works, Missouri General Assembly has uh, approved uh, public investment funding to be matched by private funding in the amount of $175,000. And we're proud to announce that we just closed 40% of that, and we're still working on that other 60% as we speak. Again, my name is Josh Holstein, and Cellaride's a technology company using text messages to revolutionize vehicle shopping, and thank you for allowing me to speak to you.
how did you make contact with the, the guy who started Carfax? Really good question. Yeah. <laughs> um, so a friend of a friend was really how that happened. And this was well before we had any of this traction, obviously. We had an, I had an idea. Um, and we were building out that product. Uh, we started with the for sale by owner product. That's actually how I came up with it. I've never worked a day in my life in the automotive industry. And so coming at this from a consumer facing perspective, I wanted to test the car. So I started creating that with the computer degree that I had. Uh, and I'm like, how in the hell am I gonna get this to the masses? And so that's when I reached out to a few people. And they said, hey, I've got, I've been working some deals with you and Barnett, would you like to meet him? Sure enough, I met him in Columbia, which is where he's based. Um, and uh, we seriously spoke for five hours. He's a good friend of mine now. He's been a part of the company for a while. Okay, so, so they made that that initial contact and you followed up, I guess, with a call or what, what have you. Yeah. Because obviously that was the game changer for you. I mean, that's... It was. Yeah. Uh, there's been a few of those game changers and, and that was the initial, let's uh, meet with uh, the founder of Carfax, um, which is what kind of uh, transitioned us into the automotive industry or the dealership industry. Um, you know, and it's exactly what happened was I had this for sale by owner product, told him what I could do with it. And he said, have you thought about a niche? Pretty big niche, nonetheless, but uh, that's what we did. Is we came up with the uh, car and photo product based on having that. Very cool. So, yeah, thanks. Nice. How has been? How's the reaction from car dealerships been? You know, are they positive? Are they negative? Did they, did they help you tweak it? Or yeah, yes, yes and no. Um, so th that's kind of the top-down approach that we took. There's, there's three tiers in the automotive industry. Tier one is the OEMs or the manufacturers. Tier two is the marketing firms that, that market to them and the dealers. And then there's tier, tier three that's the dealers. Um, we got our proof of concept by going door to door. Uh, but since I'm not a car guy, going into these dealerships and saying, hey, I got this great new product, I'm gonna sell more cars for you. Son, sit down, let me explain to you about the business is what I mostly got. Um, we didn't sell it into them. We had a dealer that's been with us for four and a half years. We lost them because of the fact that we don't have the relationships with their marketing teams. So being able to prove out the technology, showing them that this technology actually works, it's disruptive to what they're currently doing. And so we got a lot of pushback on that. Uh, working with the big organizations like the Toyotas and the Nissans and the Merits, and they understand the industry. So let us focus on what we do best and then let them actually handle the Tier three and you know, so you've kind of gone above their heads to some extent. I didn't really want to go above their heads, but I also understand that they um, have a more bottom line thinking up here, and they understand where the technology is. I mean, that's there's companies out there that are disrupting the industry, like True Car, Carfax disrupted the industry. So what we want to do is be a part of that disruption. We we say using text messages to revolutionize. We're not the revolutionary figure, but we're a part of that revolution. The culture is flawed. And we're just trying to help bridge that gap between the consumer and the dealership now. Two questions. With the kind of reinvention or like a lot of the stuff that's going back to texting now, um, how has that kind of affected your business? I'm sure that maybe has given you guys a boost. Uh, and then uh, second question is, what are your, some of your like biggest obstacles that you're trying to overcome now? Um, so going back to text, uh, this industry is pretty far behind the curve to begin with. The automotive industry, they don't make any beef about it either. They, they're okay. behind the curve on a lot of technology. Um, and so there's some really cool technology out there, iBeacons, NFC, uh, AR. I mean, there's a lot of things that I'd love to build into this platform. We created a platform and then we use text to enter that platform, and text is that widely adopted technology. We've got a new feature that we just came up with, uh, it's called SnapVin, mm -hmm. where you take a picture of a VIN, text it to 99724. Two technologies that are widely adopted, you got a camera phone and you got a text message app. So using both of those technologies to enter our platform is what is kind of next. Um, but what I wanted to do is make sure that we use the widely adopted technology so I don't have to train the, industry, or train the consumer as well because it's already bad enough to try to train the dealer, you know what I mean? And then your second question was... Biggest obstacles, yeah, challenges. That yeah. It's just making sure that, and, and, and we're not doing that now. What we're doing is we're focused on what the experts are saying the industry is going towards, and then we're actually building that out on our platform based on what they're doing. And then we're supporting 
um, we're supporting their teams yeah. as opposed to trying to support the end user. Cool. So the data that you're providing, um, two questions. One is where does that come from? And the other one is I know you and involved in another startup that has to do with that. So yeah. is some of that data being provided through? We're, we're working together on a few things like that. Uh, there's some opportunities. Um, uh, VinLogix is right. what you're talking about. And um, so the big data play is really where we see the, the future. Um, we're, we are, we're using data from sources that are already public that are already out there to, to pull in inventory, but then we're creating data through that shopper path, utilizing those shopper insights to help uh, understand where the shopper is in their, in their buyer, in the buyer funnel. Um, and then we're plugging into some of these bigger corporations already have business intelligence tools that they've spent millions of dollars on. So why recreate the wheel or reinvent the wheel in that? So uh, we're plugging into those, which in turn is providing data to us. So we're utilizing that data ourselves, or creating the data, utilizing the data we have as, as well as data that's coming from those outside sources that you're talking about. And then your second question was? No, just the tie end of the logic. Okay, yep. Um, maybe you said this and I missed it. Could you kind of walk us through the process? Say, you know, I'm a guy who lives in U.C. I want a new car. How would you how would you connect me to the cars I want? And how would I let you know what cars I want? So there's part of our challenge. Challenge. Someone had asked what our other challenges are. Um, imagine a, a what we call a ride tag, and it's it's a it's an eight and a half by eleven uh, for sale sign, if you will, in every vehicle on a dealership's lot. One of our challenges is getting those unique tags on cars and making sure they stay on cars because you know a dealership rotates their inventory about 40% a month. So getting those, those uh, tags on cars are very important for it to be utilized. And so part of the reason why we came up with SnapVin is you don't have to get those tags on cars. They're already, the VIN number is on the car in multiple places. If you take a picture of that VIN, send it to 99724, which is our short code, uh, that starts that whole process. Uh, imagine going to the car, it, it, to your point, if a dealership has the product, or an event has our product, or even these malls have the product, um, you can text the code that's on the car, and then you'll get back a mobile brochure that looks just like, Let's see if I can get back to it really quick. Um, it looks, it has the year, make, model, price, mileage, and then you click on the link that goes to that mobile brochure that has the car fax report, vehicle reviews, uh, finance options, insurance options, you name it, you know, it can be placed on that mobile version. But do you already have to know what kind of car you're looking for? Do you kind of already have to have some requisite knowledge before you enter, before your app becomes you know, applicable, or can you just start, I, don't, I want a car, I don't know what I want, I don't know, you know how broad can, it, can you start, I guess? There's a chicken and egg scenario with what you're talking about, is we need to have a large amount of inventory in our system for the search capability of the system to really play out. And so with these partnerships that we're working on, that will increase that, of course. Uh, right now, it's on site. And then we also have some application, as you can see here. Gannett is a big partner that we're working with in print. As you can imagine, print is somewhat of a dying breed. And so trying to revive that to some extent or be a part of bringing print to life uh, using the widely adopted technology that people that read the paper would use. Um, and then on, on web, uh, we're working with some third parties that we could also utilize the technology to um, kind of enhance their offering. And so there's, there's ways to get into it where um, you can start searching for inventory even before you know what you want. But right now where we're, our sweet spot is when people are already looking for a specific vehicle, either go to the lot, they're at an event, Grab them all, or they're on the site. Gotcha. Excuse me. Can you talk about your uh, revenue models for B two B and B two C? Originally, we had come up with a uh, very um, simple model. It, you know, going direct to the dealerships. There's a. Uh, it's anywhere from two hundred ninety nine dollars a month to eight ninety nine a month, and it's all dependent upon the amount of inventory that's. Lot at any given time. Uh, it's a SaaS model, we want to stick with the SaaS model. When you're working with some large organizations that have been around for a while, they're project based pricing a lot of times. Uh, one of the, um, I don't make any beef about this, we're, I, I see us getting to a point where we'll be acquired. That's really been my goal from day one is to get this to where Josh can get it and then sell it to another company. One thing that's um, 
very appealing is that these larger corporations have that project-based pricing and they're trying to get away from it and get into a SaaS model type of scenario. So we have some uh, B2B models that we're working on where we have to put in project management uh, fees and all these other things that we're not used to. We're trying to work around that and, and go back to the, the per month type pricing with them. So we're working on a, a few different models, but our goal is to get them to that as opposed to them telling us that we have to go their route, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Other questions? Yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks, Josh. Thank you for having me.